this week. Okay, we'll call this meeting. Um, we'll reconvene our, and open our open session. So I need a motion to do that. Thank you, Andy. Second. Second. Renee. So the motion on the floor is to reconvene open session. All in favor of reconvening? Very good. Okay, I want to welcome everyone here this evening. We appreciate your attendance. Um, and if you would join me by standing and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, we'll start off with some of our special recognitions. And the junior high is first on the list. All right. Uh, I've got a little write-up here uh, about our junior high cross-country team. It was written by Coach Goslin, um, who also works in our technology department. Um, junior high cross-country had a great year this year. The boys team had an impressive season, winning seven of eight games <coughs> and were conference champions. Uh, Josh Allison set a course record for the second straight year at the Antonio Middle School race. The girls team had a great season as well, but barely getting edged out for first for most of the races. They gave it their all the season, and during conference, Anna Crosby and Laura Nichols placed first and second. These kids had the determination to push, push each other every single day, and they put it on display each race. For this being my first season coaching cross country, I couldn't be more proud of them. It was a pleasure to help these kids achieve their goals alongside Coach Collin, and I'm looking forward to next season. Special insert. Um, we just got our first quarter grades back, so we always like to report how each team did um, during their season of the competition. So the junior high has probably announced the GPA for each of our fall sports teams, along with a list of student athletes who achieved the 4.0 during their season. Cheerleading comms will be recognized after the winter season, along with wrestling and basketball. Thank you to all the students, coaches, and parents who worked so hard both in and out of the classroom. Our 8th grade football team had a 3.0 GPA and Austin Romain achieved a 4.0 in this quarter. Our 7th grade football team also had a 3.0, uh, but had multiple 4.0 students, Peyton Brown, AJ Heisel, Dalton Ross, and Chase Saharsky. Some of know Chase Saharsky <laughs> at 4.0. Uh, volleyball, 8th uh, grade team had a 3.6 GPA with Jenna Brock, Dylan Day, Riley Cruz, uh, achieving a 4.0. And our seventh grade volleyball averaged a 3.5 GPA. Our boys cross country team had a 3.5 GPA with Jonah Allison, Josh Allison, Alex Lee, Colin Schneider, and Richard Whitetop earning a 4.0. And the highest GPA of all was our girls cross country team had a 3.7 GPA with Anna Crosby and Sophia Harrell earning a perfect 4.0. Thank you, Mr. Allison. Um, we have some info, some special recognitions for the high school, and Molly's going to present that for us this evening. So first we have JAG. Um, on Wednesday, October 3rd, 45 high school JAG students were inducted into the Jobs for America's Graduates Career Association. Also inducted were the 2018-2019 officers, President Caleb Brooks, Vice Presidents Sarah Wilson, Taylor Wright, Amelia Moser, and Secretary Sarah Jackson. The following students qualified to represent the HHS JAG program at the National Student Leadership Academy in Washington, D.C., November 15th to the 18th. Caleb Brooks, Sarah Wilson, Sarah Jackson, Keith Schubach. Keith was selected to attend the Christmas tree lighting ceremony at the Governor's Mansion on November 30th. Keith and Mr. Nancil will travel by charter bus with other JAG students and specialists from the South Central area who are qualified to attend. Caleb Brooks, Mr. Nancil, and Dr. Freeman have also been asked to attend the Missouri JAG board meeting at the Governor's Mansion in Jefferson City, Missouri on October 23rd and speak about the benefits the program brings to our students in our school. Um, and also, I'm hoping everybody heard about this, but 
our um, high school softball team made it to the top four in state, so they're in Springfield and they're participating in that tournament right now, which is exciting. Thank you, Molly. Um, Ten in the morning. They play at ten o'clock in the morning. Is that what we're okay? They play at ten in the morning, and if they win that one, then they they play on Saturday. Okay. If they don't win, then they play for third or fourth place in the afternoon on Friday. So we're, so we're looking for a win Saturday tomorrow, play. so they can move yeah. on to the next level. Where do they play tomorrow? I don't. Oak Grove. Oak Grove. Oh. Grove. oh. 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 Okay. Um, we also had um, a very nice letter from some retirees about the brunch that uh, was sponsored over homecoming. Mrs. Petrie and I attended, but um, we had Mr. Renauer and several of his staff and students and other uh, personnel that helped to put this on. We were very appreciative of the turnout and it was a really good time. Um, it was very nice. They, the retirees were super pleased and excited and are looking forward to next year. They had nothing but good things to say about the brunch. So we thank uh, Mr. Reednauer for putting that together. That was an awesome event. Cool. So I know it. We'll move on then. That takes us to um, our consent. Oh, did we have any visitors signed up? Did you go? Okay. Sorry. Okay. So there are no visitors. So we'll move on then to the consent agenda. Um, there are several items on the consent agenda. Hopefully, you had a chance to go through them. So let's make a motion first to approve it. And then we'll discuss any issues that you might have. I need to accept consent agenda as presented. Okay. I wasn't at the October 10th meeting. Um, that's on the consent agenda. Okay. Can we put that separate? Right? We can pull the the work session. Yeah. yeah, that's on here, right? Well, those are minutes. Well, how about we pull some of those minutes then? Because yeah. that's what we all had issues with. I know. Before. It seemed like. I like to pull September 25th and the September 25th tax hearing, both of those. Well, and minutes. the work session I was minutes? The 10th. I was here for the 10th. Well, but some others were not. So we'll just pull the minutes that gets all of them for now. But the rest of the items on the consent agenda. Are we good with that? Mm -hmm. yes. Items B through I. So we have. I amended. amended. Okay, we need a second then. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on items B through I? I know this is the first read on the policies, and I have not been able to read through them all yet. But a question there was GDC listed on the side but then when I opened it it was empty and it's not listed on the you know executive session here so is that and um, there was one that we, we didn't get in the meeting isn't that correct so, okay so that really it wasn't that I was missing it um, out of my packet then when we attended that meeting unless yeah. that was one that was added later what were the letters again she DC yeah. Okay, because so it was the one that we don't have. Uh, and just kind of my first few, it seemed like most of these were related to law changes. Is that right? There's not any of the policies yes, yes. that we ought yes. to pay real particular attention to. Any other thoughts about items B through I? <coughs> okay, so. Motion on the floor stands to approve items B through I on the consent agenda. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, very good. 
So we'll go back and do the individual minutes then. Um, we have the meeting and the tax hearing of September 25th. I need to approve the tax minutes in the regular session of September 25th as presented. So. Okay. Thank you. All in, are any discussion on those? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. And abstentions. Okay. I move to approve the September 28th special tax meeting and special meeting. And the hearing. And the hearing tax Okay. Meeting. Yeah. So we have As the September 28th tax hearing and meeting. I have a first by Ms. Petrie, a second. Second. Jane. Any discussion on those? Okay, all in favor of approving those minutes? All right, very good. Then it gets to the minutes for the work sec session of October 10th. I need a motion for that. Move to approve the minutes of September, October, October 10th. Special okay, meeting. I second. Thank you, Renee. Any discussion on that? Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes for the October 10th work session? Uh, opposed? Abstention. Abstention, sorry. Okay, thank you very much. And then there should be um, also the hearing on October 18th. We need to approve those minutes as well. Did you do that? I think we did that. We did that in the document. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need to do that? Okay. All right, so that completes um, the consent agenda, I believe. Is that correct? All right, so let's move on then to unfinished business. No, we can't do that yet. We're doing reports. I jumped the gun. Order on that. Okay, so Director Best, facilities and grounds report. Jennifer, did Good you evening. notice what I was doing there? I'm just trying. <laughs> <laughs> I was good with the real <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, one. Um, this past month and everything, we basically just kind of focused on a lot of the construction going on, as you'll see here. Charlotte, we're going to show you a little short video or pictures. Uh, what they've been doing and what how far they've gotten. Uh, again, we're still due to be finished up by Energy Sandwich, as y'all know. Uh, so we've got a really tight schedule to complete, or they do, but we are going to try to track them, making sure they're there. So it's been a big focus right now. Um, we have done some of the punch lists, which is the first part, the first punch list. You'll do another one that we completed and everything. But the first part of the punch list has been done in the areas that they did during the summer months. And what that did is what we'll finish up with that is we'll go back to the contractor, say this has to be done. So uh, that's in the, in the works at this time on all three buildings. So um, we'll keep you posted. We'll give you copies of that information as we get that all recapped and so forth as you will see it. Uh, some of the things we have been looking at and worked on, we worked with, tech, uh, with our roofing corporation, which is Trimco. Uh, they have all our warranties, as you might know, on our roofs. Uh, we've had some issues at the junior high, the um, primary in the years past, and I quote years. Um, as we keep working on them, we try to find them, we find one, get another one, right? So anyway, Tremco came out about a month and a half ago, sur surveyed all the roofs for us again, where it was having problems. They were here this past week and did the, uh, did the junior high. Uh, everything went well based on the information they know of and their knowledge, and what they did to help us out we think junior high might be leak free in most places, at least some of the old ones. Thank you, hopefully. Tomorrow we're gonna to try it for the primary. So the trim is coming back tomorrow now to do that, but that's gonna be a little different. We're actually gonna resurface about 1,500 square foot of B-wing, because that's where most of our problems are with this B-wing. Why that roof has potentially always been a problem, nobody seems to know. But we're gonna cover it basically again, is what we're doing in the B-wing. So, that should cover it for sure. So we're gonna try it. 
Um, they'll also be reviewing the intermediate roof. Uh, we've got a couple issues over here our intermediate sections. Um, so right there on campus tomorrow, they'll be surveying it to see what we need to do with that one. Because as we all know, roofs are most are pretty well one of the biggest important things we need in our building. So, uh, so we do um, basically survey these roofs quite often to make sure that A, the warranty is in place, and B, that they're being maintained. Because we don't have them, there's a lot of access down below them that's going to be damaged, and we don't, definitely don't want that. So we are working on that to try to keep up with that. One other thing that we are working on, the primary, I put it on a report, just so you're aware of it, in case some people have been running around hearing it. Uh, we are looking at some of the issues that we're having uh, with was brought up by the administration. They've got a couple of safety concerns at the primary with these playgrounds, uh, with kids running. So we have and are looking at that. Uh, so we can make sure that our, our students and our uh, public are safe and they're, they're comfortable when they're letting those kids, our kids there. So we are working on that. Uh, we're addressing it. Administration is helping out a lot with the teachers uh, and everything. So we'll keep you posted what we as a, as a school district need, might need to do as an action. Uh, but in the meantime, the teachers have done a fantastic job helping us uh, and, and maintaining the students. But it is a concern on safety factor there. So might be something we'll look at. So we'll keep you posted. Uh, work orders kind of quiet this past month, about 184, mm -hmm. uh, so that's not too bad. The auction took a lot of our time last month, and thanks to transportation and their team, um, they had to deal with us for months. Um, not having bays, some of their bays that they needed for uh, working in the buses and so forth, but kind of a slow turnout. Uh, we only had about seven bidders for the whole day, mm -hmm. uh, which is real little. Um, and they uh, showed that when Debbie and them did the recap, they showed they did about $528. So uh, that doesn't count, you know, some of the other expenses you have to look at that's still coming out of that, unfortunately. But as you all know, we don't really go after making money at it. We look at it from the point of view that we need to make sure we're getting rid of the, of the assets that we have in the district properly by policy, too. So that's something that we have to look at. But it helps some people out, hopefully, you know. So. Um, I wanted to point out one other thing too, I don't have it on here, but I just want to do a shout out to Mr. Reed now real quick too. Um, he do, he's getting ready, his um, students are uh, getting ready to do their their, their national wide city cleanup. Um, annual, I guess, uh, second annual, I guess now, maybe. Um, third. 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 <laughs> we just put signs out for him, pick up trash, we don't know how many years. But, Thanks to Mr. Renow and the students that he has, they do a fantastic job with the community service part of it. Um, as we all know, we all try to be part of the community uh, as much as possible. And I think Scott's done an outstanding job with them, so I wanted to give a shout out to him as well. So, good job, Scott. Um, other than that, we're going to show you the video. If you guys are ready, just show you a few pictures, some of the things you're going to see. Um, I don't know if we got the music. I'm sorry I didn't get that, but I can talk as I did. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I can sing. You don't want me singing. <laughs> well, that's good. I was just going to say, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it looked like before. So, you know, this is kind of the, some of the steps you go through to get there, of course. The skill is probably the hardest thing to put in and make sure it's in the right place. There's a lot of tests that go in there uh, that you have to have to make sure it's the right structure and going to support. So, really kind of a slow process, but once it gets there, that's what it looks like today. This is a bathroom Mr. Um, uh, Allison has problems with. I want to remind you what the old bleachers look like and what they look like. So these are some of the classrooms that we're still building and working on them. They've got a little bit farther now, of course. So and those will be ready here by the end of December for uh, Mr. Allison. There's the elementary. Now the elementary offices actually we'll probably be moving into them in a couple of weeks. They are basically done. Um, we got a few little fine tuning to do, but we finally got all the hardware uh, in. We got to get it installed. It goes to the secure doors in the vestibule, uh, and that's supposed to be in place according to Matt next week. So we'll probably be moving in pretty soon. They'll be happy. So.
and the letters that'll be on not on this side of the building and everything, but on the front side as we're walking up toward elementary will be put on place uh, probably in a couple of weeks. So you'll see actually say elementary. You wanna know where we're at now. So that's where we're at on that. Uh, again, I think we're done getting there. We should hit our targets. Uh, there'll be a few things that they're gonna have to finish up probably between mid-January to February, but they will finish it up. Talked to the electrician over at the primary there today, Joe, and uh, he said that it's gonna be rough for them, but they, they calculated it's about four weeks behind. So, I thought he needs to catch up a little faster, so. <laughs> he said he would, so okay. we're gonna see. So that's where we're at. So, yes sir. Excuse me, one other item. It's more like on the good news, is Ray received an email that he shared uh, with me, we shared with the admin team from the uh, superintendent of Rock Miller Construction, who's still here, yep. Matt Pig, that the elementary hosted a lunch for the construction workers, nice. and the students wrote out cards, yes. thank you cards, and he emailed late in the evening, just a very appreciative, the guys that were working there, I mean, it was pretty neat, and just, they said, we're, those girls are different than a lot of the schools that we go to work at, and just, that's a testament to them, thank you to the elementary, Miss Carol, and staff. Yeah. Any questions or anything from me? I need help you with answer a question. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Halloween. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Don't come up my house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll move on to the technology report with Grandma. <coughs> <laughs> During the past month, we've completed 209 work orders. Um, construction, Aaron Johnson's been working hard to make sure we're staying on task with what we need to get completed and then following up on all that for us. Um, Chromebooks and iPads, we've had to do a lot of repairs recently on those. And it's from keyboards to cracked screens to uh, the actual uh, the keyboard itself going bad, um, the cameras, so it's the age of them starting to take its toll on some of them. I'm just throwing that out there. So down the road when we ask for more Chromebooks, you understand that we have a need for it. And uh, Moses and Core Data, Karen Freiner has completed the Moses Core Data cycle and it was on time. She did a great job on that. There's five separate different data files that she has to join together and make sure that all that data is accurate and it takes a lot of work and she does a really good job on that. Uh, regarding training, Ethan did a training class for the intermediate staff on smart boards. Erin and I attended a conference on data privacy and Mark attended a frontline AppleTrack best practices forum. Any questions? Sounds like you've been busy. Thank you. All right. Um, Lost my phone. There we go. Um, financial report is usually given by Miss Ginge, but she is on her way to Springfield because her daughter is on the softball team, and so that was a good thing for her to get to go. Um, but you were given the same information that she would send us. Um, and I don't know, are you discussing anything in her place? Well, a few things, the audit, uh, of course, you know, she said the audit went well, and uh, that document will be presented at the next meeting there in November. About uh, the audit? About the audit, the final document. It's anticipated uh, in November. Um, and Proposition C, which we'll talk about this evening, uh, some information there. And then the facilities authority uh, met on October 15th of the central office um, and completed the necessary steps for the dis uh, dissolution of the facilities authority, which was put together um, due to the highway property in, in that uh, land contract. So they have a meeting and completed that. Any other questions about the finances? Okay. So we'll move on then and to the unfinished business section where we will be pulling um, from the table the SRO contract. Turn my page, sorry. 
so we tabled it in back in August um, but we now have that contract signed and all the attorneys have agreed from both sides I guess um, so is there do we have to approve this yes. okay so we need a motion then from one of us to <coughs> approve this contract Jefferson County Sheriff's okay. SRO officers agreement. Okay. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? I know we talked about it a little bit before. Go ahead. One thing I do want to point out is if you look on the billing 2018 uh, months, August through December. We have changed from a monthly rate to a daily rate. Um, that is the first time that that's been offered uh, to school districts. The background to that was in some districts, not Hillsboro as much, is some of the SROs were on SWAT. So they were being called out a significant amount of time. Some you know, could be three days in a week, depending on what was occurring. And that became um, superintendents discussed that at a superintendent meeting uh, with Sheriff Marshak, and they implemented a daily, so if they're gone, the district's not paying for something that uh, is not there. The increase in January is a result of the proposition that was passed in the increase in sheriff's hours, or deputy salaries. Okay, so any other thoughts or concerns questions all right all in favor of approving the sro contract for jefferson county or with jefferson county thank you all right so that finishes the old business and we'll move on to new business uh, we have an mou with jefferson franklin franklin jefferson franklin county um, community action head start. I read that. So, okay. Sorry, my computer jumped ahead. I was on the next one. Letter C. Okay, so we'll go to we'll go to A. That's where we usually start. Um, and that has to do with approving um, students for early graduation. We have from the high school letter a i guess is our first one and then we'll look at typically these are put on one executive summary but dr freeman wanted to show you that these um, students are coming from basically three different programs not just from the traditional high school building and you said that was a total of about 60 for 60, 60 total here uh, last year there was 51 Okay. So we have a little bit of an increase. <coughs> do you know how much roughly that costs us? I, I don't know. You know. I don't know how much it costs. I, I can't tell you. Um, well, you know, from reading the letter, some, some go to college. Yes. Some go to military. Some have children who go to work. Um, mm -hmm. If they're finished with their credits by December, and we keep them here they're not coming to school anyway. i mean wow. we're going to lose their attendance just anyway um, well and i as i was reading the letters just in my short four and a half years here i thought it was interesting there were a lot more that were continuing on in their education mm -hmm. early versus being a hardship on the family or that kind of thing it just seemed to you know i've seen that change right which was kind of interesting. Well, and we, we're, we've come to a point too. We offer so many. We offer those two credits at, at the junior high level. So right. you're going into high school with All two right. credits. Plus, we have the summer school where they can take keyboarding, and a lot of you know, a lot of our kids will take advantage of getting some of those um, credits out of the way so their schedules can open up during the regular school year. So providing those opportunities. Do the majority them. of these kids? come back and actually go through the ceremony. Do you know? Yeah, I, you know, I've never... I was just curious. 
I don't have specific data yeah. on that, but you know, just from from me and Danny, most of them come back with the Jennifer. Do they? Do they? And prom. Yes. Those are biggest curious. Okay. So, um, I need a motion then to approve the early graduate applications um, provided that all coursework is completed by uh, the end of the semester. So moved. Thank Second. you, John. Second? Was that that? Okay. And this is for the high school only. So, any other thoughts or questions? All in favor of approving this list? All right, very good, motion carries. So then we'll move on to the early graduates from the alternative school at semester. I need to accept the early graduates from the alternative school. Okay, thank you very much. Second. Credits are Thank you, Jane. Any other thoughts before we vote? I just had a question on the options plus students. I wondered what that was or how how that was different from the alternative student. It's a program that um, they're in school for three hours a day. Um, and they have to pass, let's see if I can remember this, Jennifer, personal finance, uh, civics, and health. And uh, Ms. Provenzano prepares them to take the um, HITSIT test, which was used to be the GED test. Okay. Um, and they have to work so they attend school for three hours a day and then they have to have so many work hours to complete their, their program. Thank you. I'm sorry, we only 17 to 17 and it's a program designed for students who are significantly behind. All right. Any other thoughts? Okay, so all in favor of approving the alternative school students to graduate early. Thank you. Okay, this one looks familiar. <laughs> all right, so this is an MOU from Jefferson Franklin Community Action Head Start. Um, and this is something that we do every year that we uh, approve. So I need a motion then to approve the MOU with Jefferson Franklin Community Action Head Start as presented. <coughs> I need second. Thank you, Renee and then Beth. Are there any questions about this? No. Oh. Everybody okay with this? Okay, it's pretty standard. All right, all in favor of approving this MOU? All right, that's good. The next item gets us, to uh, the Proposition C resolution and the ballot language. So as you know, it was discovered that um, our waiver came to a sunset. So we discussed at the last, uh, what was it, the 28th, September 28th, we discussed putting this on the ballot and bringing it before the voters um, to approve a, a, another waiver for Prop C. So the, the ballot is listed for you, I believe, mm -hmm. yes. The language for that ballot. This is how it will look. I just have a question. It doesn't say Hillsborough R3. It just says, you know, school district R3 of Jefferson County. And R3 is R3. that what it normally says on our ballot? Says it really? It doesn't? The Hillsborough R3? Interesting. Yes. I uh, just wanted to say I. I feel more comfortable about this if I actually knew why the sunset clause was on this thing in the first place. I I've been I've been trying to look into it. I haven't been getting very far yet, but 
I just like more time to look into this to see why there was a sunset clause. You know, if there was some promise that was made back then, mm -hmm. I'd like to know what that was. You know, I don't know why there was a sunset clause in theory. You know, it could have been for other reasons, like, you know, 20 years of review or whatever. But I, I just want to know the specifics of it. So, 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 so how would you find that? Well, you know, if the leader had an article on it, that would be, that they usually cover those sorts of things, like if it's promoted, you know, they quote the superintendent at the time saying, hey, this is what, you know, why we're doing this and why we're doing it this way a lot of times. So I, I just, I prefer to table this for next month. That's my. What would, what would that do to the April election? We have to have the uh, information accepted to the uh, uh January. So we're not we, in a hurry. No, I mean that's why we're January is our deadline for putting on the April ballot. So okay. we need to. But you know, if there was information, if we had information like a flyer here or something too, you know, anything, I just want to do the due diligence on this to see if I can find. If I can't, I can't. But you know, I I prefer to take this. The other question I had was the nine thousand dollars. That's not in addition to the normal. So that's just the cost of the election that we run anyway. Yeah. Now, if we put additional things on there, we are build a little more. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yes. But so it won't be significant. It's just it's, it's divided it's among. It's divided among. I knew that. Time. I was just because we'll have school board election at that yes. time too. But. Well, what are your thoughts as to John's proposal? I, I can make a motion if you want. Well, let's discuss it. And see what people think. Anybody is it going to make an an difference in whether it's expired or not, though? It's not going to make a difference in my vote, let's put it that way. It'll make a difference in my vote. Um, well, I, I just want to know but the reason there, because if it's some compelling reason, like a promise was made, hey, this is temporary, I feel obligated to honor that, regardless of you know, if it was 20 years ago. If it was just, hey, we're going to review this in 20 years, that's different. But gotcha. I want to know. Either way, i got to put the kids first. And well, this that that money is uh, uh, affects our kids drastically. Right. Yes. And even promise is a promise. It was temporary. It's just it was twenty years. Right is right. And so now we're going back and you know ask it. It's not that we're just uh, throwing a promise out the window. We're just re-asking the public if this is what they would do. I mean, if you read the ballot language. Pretty clear. Well, it's not taking actually the ballot language because it's such a convoluted situation. It's not that clear. Um, I think it's clear. To well, well, to me, it's clear. It's, it's really? asking yes or no. Uh, do you want to eliminate the sales tax reduction and operating le levy for school purposes? Proposition C rollback. Anybody who reads that isn't going to know what a sales tax reduction, the operating levy means. That is, and it is the responsibility of a voter to educate themselves. But sure. And I'm, I'm just saying that I want to know what what this is all about in terms of 20 years ago. Why was there a sunset clause? I don't know. I just want to know why. I, I want all that information before I make my vote. So, hey, that's... I, no, but I'm, the people are going to make that decision. Right. I mean, they, basically. if they want to know, they will have the opportunity to find oh, that oh, out. But, but, well, voting to ask them. Sure, but you know, I'm putting my name to approving this, so I, I want to. <laughs> I can't. So, uh, I mean, if I don't have a second, but I, I move to table it. Okay. So the motion on the floor is to table uh, creating the ballot language for this evening and until further Next information month. is gathered. We have a second. motion doesn't have a second so I sorry we'll move on then I guess um, John is there something that you'd like to talk to us about any of this or just it is this 
uh, executive summary is just showing the is the ballot language put forth by Gilmore and Bell um, that will be on the ballot and is asking permission of the board to uh, approve us asking the voters uh, in April whether they want to uh, win it. And we will be educating the public, helping absolutely. to educate them yeah, on absolutely. this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This proposition yes. on this issue. Okay, I move to accept the ballot language for the April election. As presented. As presented. Okay. Do I have a second? Thank you, Jane. Any other thoughts on that? Okay, so the motion is to accept the proposal as presented for the ballot. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. Okay, moving on. We had some change orders. Match number five. <laughs> I'll have to find the title for it. All right. I didn't even notice the title. I just read it. So it's not as yes, it's not as big as it had been. That's correct. It's still we're winding down. Okay. So um, I'd like to hear a motion to approve the change to approve of the change orders as presented. I make a motion to approve the change orders as presented. Second. Any discussion or questions about any of these change orders? Anybody okay? Okay. All in favor of approving these change orders? Thank you very much. Motion carries. Okay. We'll move on to the the bus grant. Good job. Thank you. And and really, that's so awesome that you And did. we were number five in the lottery pool. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. That was pretty awesome. Yes, did you How wait many hours did it take you to do this, the application? It didn't take that long. I've maybe total six hours, but that was just trying to figure out where to get the information from on the bus. Really. Yeah. But it just works. Thanks. It's awesome. Thank you. I need to accept the grant for the bus Thank purchase. you. Thank you very much. Second. All right, so um, we are proving, um, allocating the funds that we need to t um, go toward the purchase of three new buses. Okay, any discussion other than what we just had? It's pretty much. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Kudos. Just to bring go up ahead, for John. discussion is we didn't budget for these oh, well. on this year's budget. But they have to be purchased by June 30th. And so we had long discussions in light of the proposition C and we have never reduced funding this year is trying to decide do we move forward? Because they needed they need to know whether we're gonna accept it for schools that will um, take and our recommendation is that at the end of the day we need buses. We need to move forward and it's the, you know basically we're gonna not quite get a bus free, but getting that amount of money, it's still going to be $180,000. Yeah. You know, but it's still going to be that amount of money. Um, there are things that uh, we can look into when we talk about the finances and reserves, etc. Is this again just getting out there to look at our options as this lease purchase? If there uh, just looking at the options is hey there's two those were all the different things that we looked at as far as hundred eighty thousand dollars in the budget that you know if it was a issue with moving on that is even in the short term and depending on what happens in April then just paying it off and uh, Kelly but, recommends this as well oh yeah well we went before right. she had right uh, so if she thinks that we all think of that Yes, it's a big expenditure, but we need to catch up and we can't give back free money to our taxpayers. Give back free money. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's really uh, oh, five, for us. Five, two, get three quarters free. Okay, any other thoughts? 
All right, so we have a motion to approve allocating the funds needed to purchase these three new buses. So all in favor? Very good. Letter G gets us to the early separation <coughs> incentive program. Now this is the second time we've offered this, right? Yes. Okay. Is uh, since our last meeting is I uh, sent out a survey to our staff uh, asking if they were will be accepting, we're fairly confident, <coughs> we're interested and needed to visit in it, but needed to research more information. Those individuals are more like it's my 25th year, I want to go 25 and out. Uh, I've visited with. Uh, several individuals and just kind of working through some items. So uh, for certifieds in determining the whether we should as a district move forward, um, I looked at the responses and uh, putting before you the ones that were fairly confident they will accept the ESIP. There was a couple others that put it on there but they weren't going to qualify. You know, so I followed up and said, hey, you can't retire, or you can't leave uh, based on the qualifications within there, because it's a separation thing. So you'll see the individuals um, kind of that were interested in looking at determining, all right, what's the financial impact, okay? Is you'll see on, uh, I believe it's the next page if you scroll down, the individuals we have one, two, six certified, um, and then I believe the six classified individuals. And after this has actually been another person that put in uh, and said they were interested. In order to determine whether we should move forward with this, it's important to look at what is their annual rate of pay. I did not include the PSRS amount, you know, the 14.5% of the higher amount versus the other. This is strictly salary versus um, uh, a salary. So at the top person, that's a certified teacher that's making $67,000. For the purpose of doing the comparison was we're going to replace everyone, but we were going to hire back a person with five years experience and a master's degree. Hypothetically. Hypothetically, that's just to give, you know, rather than saying, hey, we're gonna hire all a first year and a bachelor's, because that's gonna show a bigger savings. Right. It's let's um, put a five years in a master's and <coughs> so you see that's the second column where that individual salary based on this year's salary schedule would be forty two thousand one hundred forty four dollars. Well the next column over is adding in the $12,500 that we would be paying to the retiree or the, the individual that's leaving the district in that first year, okay? So adding that to the replacement wage results in a salary of, or total expense of 54,000. So you see the projected savings for that particular individual um, is $12,000, right? The big savings, and you'll see here in most situations, is um, the certified staff really drive the savings. Um, the classified staff, there isn't significant savings. It's more dependent upon position. One of the reasons for that is um, you'll see the bottom uh, two Classified staff, those are paraprofessionals. When your $12,000 is pretty close to the yearly wage that they will make. Um, last year, when or the previous time when we did this, we spread it out over two years, it was basically a $6,000 difference. A para works approximately $1,000 an hour, so in order for it to be a wash, literally it was a thousand hour, you'd have to have $6 an hour difference in their salary. Um, so. Going through all of that, looking at if these, the assumptions are these individuals 
retire or separate from the district and we replace every position and we replace every position hiring somebody with five years in a master's degree the estimated net savings is thirty two thousand dollars now last time when we did this we did it over two years all right so it was six thousand dollars one year and six thousand dollars in that thirty two thousand doesn't sound like a lot but if you look at like the last time we did it we're spending there's 12 which 12 people leaving times twelve thousand dollars is one hundred forty four thousand dollars and change and we're doing all that year one so the year two savings is 32,000 plus that 140 because we're doing it all front and so um, you can see kind of the difference in the annual rate of uh, pay the replacement wage and then adding in those funds that we'd be paying to the individuals separating from the district so and, so over two years you're saving over 200,000 depending on you know the who you hire, et cetera. But yes, if you're compare, if we compare it to the last time that we did it, because the last time that um, we did the retirement incentive, it was approximately 158,000 in year one, 156 in year two, is we're not capturing that in year one, we're capturing most of it in year two. Um, so, and there may be additional savings based on if there wasn't, depending on how different things were structured or potentially not replacing someone, but our intent was is to replace, it's not designed, I'll be clear, to not replace teachers, et cetera. It's, uh, there may be, we plan on, would be a plan to replace all our teaching staff, et cetera, and look at those items. Why did you choose to change up instead of two years, do it on the first year? Okay. Uh, that was a recommendation on the attorney when we when we said it was looking at it in it because it becomes tax implications for the individuals <coughs> um, when you're doing it over two years one would think that you're only adding six thousand dollars to your mm -hmm. salary if you're receiving that as a condition of like entering into a contract According to RS, it is that income is twelve thousand dollars in year one, it's even though you're not getting the income until year two. Really? And so that becomes it's so my <laughs> um, that being for for the individual that is leaving the district. Secondly, <coughs> it just becomes cleaner um, for long term planning. You know, it's for the individual. Um, I think it's also while it reduces our savings in year one it, you're giving all the money to the individual that's leaving the district right up front that has provided the potential for opportunities for them to um, buy years and take advantage of potentially the rule of 86 partial lump sum and been able to work with some staff members to be like hey if you do this around and where they use that twelve thousand dollars you know they have to buy their years kind of on the front end but if they have a short period of time um to kind of if they're in a position to do that to buy the years that extra year that will bump them up to the rule of 86 some employees can literally put that twelve thousand dollars if they have money in their sick leave balance when we pay that out it takes <coughs> they would actually have to pay out of pocket their net that their wallet has to go down reduces that and it's pushing them in to i don't want to use the word windfall but it allows them to take advantage of a partial lump sum etc so i've been able to work with staff members on that it's been that's been very fun to have uh, visit with some staff members who didn't know that they could retire and all of a sudden uh, the light bulb goes off and uh, the, 
and you know what, everyone on the list is deserving. It's exciting. I'm, I'm glad that our district uh, offers it to our classified staff. That's not always the case. I'll tell you that on that list, we have uh, some of our staff have worked in classified positions, and paras, et cetera, 30 years, mid 25 years. Um, and this is a great way for the district to say thank you, but also it presents, um, we're taking care of all of our employees, you know, so wish we could do more, um, but the recommendation is that we move forward because I think it's uh, beneficial to both the district and uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Thank, thank you. you. So we have a motion on the floor to approve the early separation incentive plan. Any questions? All in favor? <coughs> All right. Very good. That gets us to our <coughs> item of the evening, which has to do with construction of the elementary. So I'm going to let Let's you talk about out. that since you know more about it. All right. Oh, um, there will not be any action taken tonight. This is more informational is as you are aware we uh, did not finish that top area of the new classroom addition right now it's a very large uh, open space and we're as we're kind of wrapping up our construction um, projects and looking at our contingency fund and like hey what can we do with those bond proceeds is there's a lot of needs in the district but it's evaluating we were kind of looking at what are the things what can we get done for five hundred thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars etc is you know when you look at the high school and we need to address some of the needs over there as far as our entrance etc um the issue is five hundred thousand dollars probably isn't going to do it be able for us doesn't allow us to do it right and ultimately if we're not able to do it right is we probably shouldn't start that potentially um, and looking at the other projects so kind of coming back to that we've we have a changing population in our school is um, our sped population has risen um, not a huge number of students it really hasn't and we've kind of trickled up, but the needs of the students have um, escalated, which is a result in staffing and uh, those type of uh, situations. And with a high number of our uh, behavior students, a growing number, I won't say a high number, a growing number. Um, and with, historically we lost the co-op in Jefferson County uh, when that uh, dissipated mm -hmm. several years ago is we house our special education and try to address all of their needs as we can and when we're not able to meet those needs then we uh, look for uh, other avenues outside of district so one of the things that we've discussed in the past is how to address some of our changing needs specifically like with uh, behaviors uh, students with autism and having um, uh, facilities and, and equipment that is providing the best educational environment for those students and all of our students uh, here at Hillsboro and so that we can best meet the needs of our students and so we started looking at hey what is that space over there you know what could we use that and just what this drawing is is um, I visit with the architect and said what would it cost do you think that to finish that space the walls in that space everything is done what would it cost to put walls up and to build a special education center or wing where we're able to do things do it the right way with a sensory room that is designed um, done first class the way that it should be as opposed to trying to make do in a, a classroom that was designed as a regular education classroom 
that doesn't have uh, all the equipment, et cetera. He said, I think that we could probably come in under that number. I said, well, don't, do it. will you come down and visit with our staff um, and we'll talk about it. And so we, he came down and um, laid some paper over that space and we toured that space and he has uh, presented this and there was an option B which has a, a larger sensory room but you'd have to walk through the uh, sensory room to get to an admin office. It has a recovery room, a white room which uh, is a sensory type uh, room. There's actually in a we sent this out to the principals where you see the doors walking into that right hand side is actually the doors would be moved they said a closet would be nice there and then build a, a shared teacher office with windows that could be used for observation and it's a space that is designed specifically um, for this those students and those needs and putting uh, the things in place for that he has not gotten back to me. He was going to touch base. The kind of the thought process was this: is this would obviously have to come before the board of education. Let's talk about it. Is this something? This is a need that we have in our district. That is now the time to address it um, and try to develop a K six program to, uh, of that nature. Which this is the space. The program isn't been designed um, uh, matt would work with that we would need to look at some of the the staffing you know we're not in a position to add a bunch of staffing how would that look we don't know all that the first kind of question was we even build it you know so this is more of putting it out there to say hey if this is under that um, that price and we can do it and do it right not a band-aid not something that we're like oh we would to do it right putting the things in there so that potentially there's cost savings for not having um, our students go to another school uh, because we're not able to accommodate their needs so that they can still stay at Hillsborough with their peers potentially developing a program where districts may send children to ours just like as we're paying to send our students there may be the opportunity to a student in a neighboring district they don't they're not able to meet those needs we have an opening and we take those students and those costs help offset ours with obviously always focusing on our students number one to where they're uh, staying here the advantages um to the elementary as we kind of looked at it is it's in the middle between um at grade level k k6 one of the things that makes it difficult for us as a district to address some of those needs from building to building is our population in each building may not warrant a teacher all right in a k6 building there's five or six kids but a, at the primary there may be one or two and the elementary's got one i mean it's got three not enough to warrant three teachers you know and so um, we sometimes struggle in dressing those needs uh, so putting it there at, at the elementary the space is already built you know which is a major cost to start we've talked about there are different areas maybe around the district and looking at that but then you have the playgrounds already there you know we may need to and would probably building an inclusive playground obviously and to make that so that as a mom or dad when you walk in you're like this is where my child needs to be um there's nursing services there's a lunchroom all of those different things are attached within that building it's attached to our school so just a thought on that i wanted to bring up speed get your input Matt, if you have other thoughts that I mean it's something that we've been discussing for quite some time just because of the needs have kind of increased so how can we better meet it across the board um, program-wise I've been discussing kind of 
brainstorming a lot of options and a lot of tours of other facilities. Um, so based on that information and based on kind of the spacing and everything, can we actually legitimately make it work? Because like we said, we don't want to put a band-aid on something, we want to actually do it the right way. Um, and based on this and all the information, yeah, and based on the programming and everything, it hasn't been bad. It's there, and we've got a need. So kind of addressing that component. How, how many districts in the county offer this kind of service? Mm -hmm. that Depending on the level of it, I guess I should say, um, it's a little bit different. Um, there, there are a couple that do offer a, a behavior program. Um, there's, you know, the autism component of it. Um, but to actually look at more facility-wise, it's more of a private facility. Um, there's, there's one in the county that does more of the behavior side of it. Um, and there's a lot of districts that so send students there. My question is, this, would this fill the needs of other districts? I mean, like, if there's a real need for something like that. Yes, I mean, our ultimate goal, obviously, is to take care of our own students. However, right. if that need should arise, or if that opportunity should arise, that, you know, we're contacted by another district of saying, hey, do you have the spacing or the opening for that? Um, then we can look into it further to see, is it something that we can actually make work? And if so, then we'll pursue that with that route. Um, which is one of those long-term objectives in the back of our mind as, hey, if you develop it the right way, there are opportunities that you can do. How many students can we serve with this size of a space? Is there a <laughs> student capacity that we're looking at? Not necessarily uh, capacity in, in regards to size. You just got to be careful of the severity and level of the needs within that area. And that's what you got to really look at. So it's not necessarily always the spacing; it is the different different levels of the students within that setting. Mm -hmm. um, so that can that can drastically change from year to year. One year might be like eight might be the max, or nine might be the max in that room. Uh, the following year it might be six. Um, just so that is a kind of a year by year and case by case. Um, that's why we would look at it carefully on that end of it. Okay. And to that end, I mean. This is, when I talk about typical like um, process of uh, starting something, it's really kind of, there's the brick and mortar before the program's really in place. It's kind of a unique situation and that's where, and we've talked about, it. if the space doesn't work, then we don't do it. You know, we have some ideas. But for the space point. is useless right now. Right. right. So this would be making lemonade out of the lemon that's sitting there. Right. <laughs> it, it allows us to address a need. That's, that was more, we think, it, I don't even, we think it may allow us to address a need is let's look at all, all of the different things. Because mm -hmm. um, we're using the money that's in our contingency that's left from this building project. So it's not like we're pulling money out of our savings account somewhere. No, this is budget. using, hey, that when bond it's bond money. Right. And so is this a project addressing uh, our special education need, building that, and take, addressing that need? And that was what we planned to do all along, was when we came to the end of the building projects, what are we going to do with what was left? And we had options or thoughts about what we would use it on and I personally think this sounds like a great idea. Don't we have some initial research from when uh, Scott was proposing the Hawk School at the Intermediate as far as what a program like this would look like? Who would not exactly be started for? Scratch. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we, 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 Matt and I talked um, I know Mr. Steele was involved in that in the sinker as well, and they, they kind of took it and ran with it from there. Um, so, yes, yeah, so start from scratch. Yeah. And this is the, we, I mean, we've been discussing for quite some time, the opportunity unfolds itself now, so it's one of those things. But we've got a lot of research that we've been doing over the years um, with this. But there really isn't anything we can do to, yet until we know. No, is 
I think the there's not enough information. I mean, for us to make an <coughs> official recommendation as to, hey, we need to move, is, as a board, I would want to know, all right, what's the cost of the facility? What is, what is the program? Mm -hmm. what, is, what would that look like? What is the, the staffing? You know, we can't create a whole bunch more staffing needs. Is how is it, what are the different things? How would other buildings be impacted? So, yeah, and safety, too, if yeah. real high behavior needs and, like, what the policies would be written out that if, if how many, I mean, if there's violence and can they get out of that building, I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, but are you looking from us to say, yes, are continue looking at it? Yeah, uh, basically, are we interested in exploring it, you know, or do I call, say, hey, no, we probably not I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. I mean, think of days where 100 kids um, suffer because of one that's in the wrong spot. It sounds like a great opportunity if we can work it out. You know, but that is, that's our hope. Yeah, this is early stages yet. So I appreciate your efforts in that, and it sounds very promising. Okay. So that will conclude all the items on the agenda, which means <coughs> we I'm looking for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. And okay. All in favor of adjourning tonight's meeting, raise your hand. Okay, very good. Thank you for attending. We appreciate you coming.